Welcome to Old Guy Tech. The OGT.TV recording studio. Technology for the rest of us. 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 Good afternoon. Today is January 12, 2016, and you're watching Crime Beat with your host, Rob Charney. Today's special guest is Sheriff John D'Agostini, Sheriff of El Dorado County. And once again, John, thank you so much for being part of this show. We really appreciate it. Couldn't do it without you. And I got to tell you, we, we get, we've gotten so many positives about the show. Good. And the information that we're getting out there to, to those that want to know things. And I get a barrage of questions, usually right after a show. So I got to remember to write them down because there's always something. But one of the things I wanted to start <coughs> with um, is that um, the Sheriff's Department has embraced social networking. Finally. Finally. They've embraced Facebook. They have a Facebook page and they have embraced Twitter. And I'll tell you what. One of the things that was really interesting to me, and, and just to show you how great uh, Facebook can be and how great our community is, you know, you guys out there, you are Johnny on the spot. Uh, some of you may know, some of you may not, that there was a, a vehicle, a very unusual vehicle that was stolen. Uh, I'm going to hold up a picture for it, and as if you guys can see this, this is not your everyday... A uh, little car kind of pink and blue and green. And some knucklehead, just be nice, some knucklehead decided he was going to steal this car. And I'll tell you what, Facebook lit up, Twitter looked up. There's the, there's the knucklehead being escorted away from the property. Thank you for Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> or whatever he may be charged with more stuff. I'm sure there's more to it. But um, uh, my understanding is Facebook paid a lot, uh, you know, did a lot to help find this guy. Well, this one this one was a Facebook uh, arrest. Um, we had another one a couple weeks ago with a uh, 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 armed robbery in, a, in Cameron Park mm -hmm. at, the, uh, at a pharmacy. Um, posted it immediately. Our, our staff posted it immediately on Facebook and within a few hours. We had tips that are resulted in the arrest, the recovery of evidence. Um, Facebook is, is turning out to be wonderful. It's it's wonderful. It's the tool and the way it should be used. Absolutely. I mean, it is so great. And and the main, you know, I think we talked about it on here your or shows past, but the main thing about Facebook is today's news cycle is instantaneous. It right. doesn't take 24 hours right. for the print and everything right. else. Or two days for the newspaper the to come out. Yeah, or whatever. No, right. It's instantaneous. And we need to be able to, from law enforcement, we need to be able to get clear, concise, accurate information out. Because if right. not, the media and the community really are, are making it up. Right. Well, garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. Right. So, and you know, there's two, two real good examples of it that, that really convinced me that we need to get going on this. We need to, a presence was, uh, the Boston marathon bombing right. and Sandy hook. Right. Um, Boston marathon bombing. Boston has a, a fantastic, uh, robust social media presence. Mm -hmm. Um, they were, if, if you watch, if you remember that incident, the information was instant. It was clear. It was currently uh, constantly being updated with accurate information. There right. wasn't a lot of, well, well, is this really true? What happened there? What, well, what about this? Right. There wasn't much of that going on. That's because of their social media presence. Contrast that with, with uh, Sandy Hook. Man, we didn't know anything. We, right. were, we, we, we heard all kinds of crazy stuff that first we really. Yep. I mean, yep. even the, the 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 suspect was falsely identified. Oh yeah, as the the other brother. You right. Know? It was, right. it was nuts. Well, with this, with Facebook, have the right. ability to, to to be able to get that information out clearly and accurately and quickly, and then, even more so, the more followers that we have on our account, and that's what we're we're really encouraging folks is to share our 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 page. Because the more followers we have, when we post something in a, in a real emergency, we can get 
the most information, accurate information out to the most people as possible. Absolutely. For evacuation yeah. routes, for where not to go. Right. For, for, Weather related instances absolutely. with uh, road issues. <laughs> absolutely. With anything that involves the community. And it works really well. Yes. Um, even the latest situation with the uh, San Bernardino terrorists, uh, with those, those idiots, um, they were able to use social media to pinpoint what was going on. And uh, by the way, just for you anti-gunners out there, I want you to remember that uh, the long guns that he used in those shootings were illegal because it was done through a straw purchase. So I don't want to hear any more crap about, oh, you shouldn't have those guns. No. Nope. I've about had it here. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I'm dying here. Gun laws are doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so it's been really good. Um, so, and, and one of the other things that I thought was really interesting is that uh, not only uh, is the sheriff's department looking at Facebook, but they're doing Craigslist too. And um, I found out that you, uh, your office, was able to find material from a theft, recoverable by some idiot posting it on Craigslist. And it was really easy to send some undercover guy to come in and say, oh, yeah, I want to buy that stuff. Why don't you show me what you had? Perfect. And all they had was stolen items. How great was that? And it resulted in four arrests, um, a lot of recovered stolen property, drugs, um, illegal firearms, a sawed-off yeah. shotgun. Oh, um, it, was, it was a great case. What a great case. Great case. So, again, another great way that <clears throat> social media yep. uh, you know, works. And, and, and I think these idiots have been going with impunity on Craig's, Craigslist in particular. Um, because of the way Craigslist is set up, it's so easy to sell anybody anything. Um, I think this was wonderful. It's another great tool. Uh, one I hadn't heard any other agency doing. So I think you guys are at the pinnacle of showing how to get it done. Uh, you know, using that and uh, great job. Good That's people. all. Uh, you know, uh, your detectives did a wonderful job in checking up on that. And once again, uh, EDSO gets a thumbs up for me and, and the wonderful job they've been doing. So that's that's basically the social media part I wanted to hit because I think it's fantastic. And Good. yeah, that was actually that. our that wasn't our investigation division. That was our SED team. Really, our special enforcement detail, the one that we made a real team. Right. Oh, they're fantastic. Good. They do wonderful work. Well, they're the guys that are trained for it, and they know what to look for, yep. and and uh, God bless them. They, you know, uh, save some people some heartache, recover some material, and get those guns Knuckle. that they illegally attained <sighs> out of their hands. <laughs> Knuckleheads off our out of our communities. <laughs> That's right. Once as long as again. the courts don't put them back in our communities, because oh, of Prop Forty Seven and realignment. And... <clears throat> what else you got, Rob? Now I'm depressed again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 707. Rob's is having still one bugging. of those days. Yeah, I am. Rob's I, having you one know, of those days. I have had a couple of huge gun battles on Facebook. If you guys follow me on Facebook, and it's you know, it's just go to Rob Charney and you'll see me on Facebook. I, I I've been the, the lone saber out there trying to get some sense into these people that don't understand what the Bill of Rights are all about, and certainly don't understand what the Second Amendment's all about. And um, so, anyway, it's, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little torqued because uh, some people that I thought were intelligent, <laughs> I've changed my mind. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, say that I thought was interesting: a fellow sheriff in in Fresno County, uh, and it's Margaret Mims. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things she actually came out and said is uh, she's praising concealed carried and protection it afforded permit holders after an armed citizen at an ATM was able to use his gun to uh, stave off repeated attacks during an attempted robbery. Beautiful. We had a citizen with a CCW that did his job, wanted to, wanted to make sure he stepped there and made people safe and ended the situation. And we have a sheriff. Thank you. Um, Sheriff Mims, mm -hmm. she did a wonderful job. Thank you for commenting on this in a positive way. So, again, those naysayers out there about people with concealed weapons, I, once again, I want you to make sure you understand that we do good. We're, we're not the bad guys. Yeah. We do. Mar Margaret's a very pro-Second Amendment sheriff and pro-CCW sheriff. That's great. Yeah, she's yeah. a nice lady, very smart, smart lady. You know, Fresno... Fresno used to be very, very conservative, but it's turning the other way. So I'm glad she's hanging. Well, in there, I think it's you know? it's it's much like Sacramento County, where the the core, the the urban area, is is 
predominantly liberal Democrat, right. and then the the outlying urban r- or outlying rural areas are the opposite. Um, and, right. And right. as long as you know the opposites out. Way the, the the insides, right. uh, will the the rural areas on the and the outskirts and she'll the suburbs, to, yeah. you know, will still be able to have those kind of sheriffs in those types of counties. Well, that's what we need. And uh, I I had a really interesting conversation about. Uh, oh, this was a, a little bit off the topic, but it had to do with the amount of uh, land that the federal government actually owns. And and in the Constitution, there really isn't any tool for the federal government to own any lands, but. Most of the West, the 100 Merinian on down, is owned by the government. Government, yeah. And uh, I put this map out, and, and that it, was never the intent. No, it was supposed to be transferred to the states as soon as they could uh, afford it. Right. Not buy it, right. but as soon as that their own infrastructure was big enough where they could take on the responsibility of those "quote unquote" untaxed lands. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, and look at how much taxes they really are missing. Now, yes, some of them are, are military bases in there. You've got Edwards and some of the other huge pieces that's of property. That's different. But that's different. That's different. Those right. are a different, a different uh, category. Right. Military. Military is a right. different category. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, but my, sh- my short story to this is that this friend that I know, when I posted it, his only one line to me was, Bull, okay. And, uh, Another friend wrote by, that answer is the only answer a person can give when they really don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, makes sense to me. He said, so don't worry about the guy because he doesn't know what he's talking about. But it's uh, it's really crazy. So I thought that was pretty good. So, but if I, because I use that answer once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> but I always follow it up with a reason. Well, but no, yes, 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 All yes. Right. Yes, you do. That's different. <laughs> You don't just say BS and walk away. away. No. You say, no, this is why. I've watched you. You, you educate us on the way okay. things are. So, no, we won't talk to you. The, Maybe although, I better quit using that. My wife told me I need to quit using that. I, I, I use it too. <laughs> Sometimes it's appropriate, right? <laughs> so, you know, the other thing that you have coming up, I wanted to make sure that uh, everybody out there had an opportunity to know about. Oh, and before I forget, phone lines are here. If you wish to call in and ask the sheriff a question, 530-621-1210. So the phone lines are here if you want to take a question. But one of the things you've got coming up uh, are these community uh, meetings. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, well, so we can talk about them a little bit because <clears throat> you, you've got the meetings. And I'll give it out here real quick. You're going out throughout the, all the supervisor old districts. Yes. And you're holding these kind of like a town hall meeting. Is yes. that right? Yeah. Okay. With a purpose. and. Okay. Yes, it should be. It was in that press release. All right. Um, to talk about the oh, facilities. Oh, about the facilities. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've talked about the facilities for a long time here, but what the press release actually said that uh, it talks about the fact that the sheriff's facility was built in 1971, and over the decades we've had, they have definitely outgrown the facility, that alone. And also there's issues of some public health situations and other things going on in the, in the existing facility. And it's time to, time to move on and get something new. So so that you can get the public on board, educate. We want the folks there. Well, well, and more than that. And we'll, Remember a few years ago, I did the, I did the same thing. I right. just did a community outreach. Um, we Work For You is what, what that series was called. And we did the same thing in each supervisorial district. We had a meeting. Right. <clears throat> to reach out to the community to let everybody know who we are, what we're there, what what we do, the different divisions, um, give an overview of the whole total operations, and then take feedback from the community as what they like, what they don't like, what can we do better. Um, right. the, the feedback on that one was overwhelmingly, 99%, I believe out of out of uh, probably 75 responses, but one only one was bad. Right. Um, so this one is along the same lines, um, but a little different. We are in the process, and we've talked many times on this show, like you just said, right. about this new facility and, and moving forward with it and where we are. And um, We're at a point now where we are going, we're building, uh, the county accepted uh, the contract with Arch Nexus, an uh, 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 architecture firm mm-hmm. and they are putting together and building what's called the bridging documents mm-hmm. so these are the documents that will actually go out and a contractor will will bid 
Uh, it's on an RFP. So, RFP. Right. So we'll bid on these, these documents things. for right. the design build, the final design build. Right. Um, so this is a huge step, but we want to engage the community because we live in a bubble. Mm -hmm. we, we, we provide our service. We live in a bubble. We don't really know, really, we need to ask. What, what do you, what does the community want to see in their sheriff's office, in their public safety headquarters? Right. What don't they want to see in their public safety health headquarters? Mm -hmm. To help guide us through this process of coming up with these specifications so that we get not only a facility that meets our needs, but also meets the community's needs mm -hmm. today and into the future. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually kind of interesting. We had the, they had the first big uh, executive meeting yesterday with, with team leaders. We're pulling team leaders from every division in the agency mm -hmm. to bring everybody to the table to talk about these specs and what do we need and moving forward. And it's interesting, and I didn't expect this, but they don't know. Hmm. We don't know because we've they've lived under these conditions for, for so, so long, long that the common response is we just want a new building. Right. Well, what, no, no, no. What do you want in that new? What building? do you want yeah. in that? Well, we just we need a detective vision. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you want that to look like? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we need cubicles. Okay. How big? What's going to work for you? Um, we need an interview room. Okay. That interview room, where should, where's the best place to situate it? Do we want it fully wired? Do we want another one that maybe isn't? All these questions that need to be answered going right. through this process. Right. And like I said, it's so interesting to see that mindset. And I, you know, because I've only been here five years now, but some of these folks have been here 20, right. 30 years. Right, yeah. Um, I know what we need. I, I, I go oh, around sure. and I talk to my peers and I see their facilities and I see things that I like. I see things that I don't like. But again, I live in a bubble too because right. Right. this is what I'm, what I'm doing all the time. Um, so that's what the purpose of these meetings are. We really want to get the public engaged. Um, you know, at the first round of the We Work For You uh, meetings we had years ago, um, we really didn't get that much of a turnout. Right. And I look right. at that as, well, I guess people, if they were mad at us, if we weren't doing a, a good job, turnout. I guess we'd have had a big turnout. <laughs> right, right. But we really wanted that engagement. On this one, um, I'm, I'm really hoping we get as many folks as we can. If you're watching this, if you watch this, if you even if you can't make it, that's fine. Spread the word, though. The, the information is on our Facebook page. Right. It's um it's on a, our our blog page. It's on a, a, a it'll be as soon as the media catches up in their news yep. cycle, it'll be posted everywhere. Well, it'll be on our show, so you're gonna be able to see that on the show of uh, when and yeah. where. Right, and, and so I, you know, really just really quick, I'll go through it so that everybody gets an idea of what we're talking about here. Um, so the, the the meeting schedules will begin with District Two on Monday, January 25th at 6 p.m. It's at the Pioneer Park Community Center. So that's the first Monday, uh, I mean, yeah, first Monday meeting, so should we speak, in January for, uh, for the location in District 2. District 3 will be held then on Tuesday, the 26th, and that'll be over at the American Legion Hall off of Greenstone Road. Uh, then we move into Wednesday, uh, the 27th, and that's up at Pollock Pines Community Center. Then in District 1, that'll be Thursday the 28th, and that's at the El Dorado Hills Fire Department. And then uh, District 4, Monday, February 1st, will be at the uh, Pilot Hill uh, Cool Grange Hall uh, over there in Cool. Yep. So there's those, in a, in a nutshell, there's those meetings. Uh, you can follow up by, again, going to the sheriff's website and looking at these dates. I know I threw yeah. them out there. But if that piques your interest at all, uh, yeah, please, please go. Yeah, please, please, and spread the word. And then we're probably going to follow up with another round in, oh, May or so. Right. With, okay, we took what you said. Right. This is what we did with it. So we're gonna um, tighten it up, get a little tighten bit it up. Yep, better idea. A little bit more specs, and your information from the community. This is what we heard you say. This is how we incorporated it into the specs. Right. Um, just so everybody, so folks know we listen. 
Right. And we didn't, you know, oh, yeah, we took Oh, it no, I off. think these are great. We um, moved forward. You know, one of the things, well, because maybe I'll talk to you off the air about you know, about your little group. One, you know, I, um, I've i sat on uh, the Transportation Commission, the Transit Authority Commission, the Fishing Game Commission, and all that. Uh, and um, I've helped with uh, these types of groups in talking about, you know, bringing in a uh, more of an independent, somebody out of your agency, but somebody who has a lot of experience on these buildings and things. I'll volunteer my time. Should you ever want it, I'd be glad to help Thank out you. with that. So that's there for you. Um, what was this one? Oh, this was that coop already sold. So, uh, so I've had a few. We've had a few questions that were sent to us, and we've talked about them on and off. You know, we do mm -hmm. this every month, so sometimes we repeat ourselves. But it, it sometimes it's newer information, or just to remind people again out there about a few things that uh, come across my desk. And um, we see what's happening in the city of Sacramento with the homeless demonstration that's taking place and the, a group anonymous threatening to attack the infrastructure of the city of Sacramento on, on the homeless situation. I haven't given it a thought a, a whole lot here in El Dorado County. How are we doing, especially as we're in the winter months here? Are we... we well, I think I think we've talked on the show before about homelessness, and you know when the Haven was going on, and right. the, I call it the bird feeder effect. We had people coming from all over. Oh yeah, all over from New York. I believe they had somebody show up Gee. saying, "Well, I heard you have a homeless camp." Well, it was only for El Dorado residents. Yeah. Anyway, you know, I I have my my philosophy on the homeless issue is this is a community issue, not a government issue. Um, I don't believe that the government should be getting involved uh, uh, in this issue. Mm -hmm. um, the churches, the the, the faith-based communities, um, the, the, a lot of the the uh, benevolent nonprofits that we have, um, that's community. And we're blessed in El Dorado County that, for the most part, they step up. Yeah, they do now, a real good job. One of the things I think that could that could move it in a more positive direction and, and dealing with the issue is if government would get out of the way right. of some of these faith-based organizations right. and these groups to allow them to provide for the homeless community. Cause if, if you think about it, there's, there's, there's three, three type of homeless. There's those which we all think of when we think of they're homeless, they're homeless by no fault of their own. They fell on really hard times. Right. They're really trying to find a leg up. They just need a little help here and there and whatever, and they'll be back on their feet. Then you have the mentally ill. Right. Um, that's a whole different segment that needs to be dealt with in a whole different manner that we're not focusing on in this nation. That's right. Um, and dealing with this issue, and it goes all the way to the gun control issue. Right. And the gun issue yeah. is, the mental, is mental illness. And then the third is those that are just antisocial behavior. They don't want to. They want to be homeless. Um, that's it. They're, that's their lifestyle. They, they don't want to be. They homeless. want everybody to leave them alone. Stay yep. out of my house. Stay out of my life. Stay out of my hair. Leave me alone. Whatever. Yep. And that's fine too, except for the criminal element that follows it. Follows in that group. Right. Um, Which always amazes me because if these people don't have money, how are they paying for their drugs? So we've got a lot stealing. of stealing. So it's usually crime. You know, uh, it's either theft or crime, right. or unfortunately for the young girls, a lot of times it's prostitution in, in that situation, and then it gets kind of ugly right. at that right. point. So the, the bottom line is, is you know, from from a law enforcement, from a public safety standpoint, uh, uh, you know, we deal with the homeless. We get calls on the homeless. Um, you know, we enforce all of the, the, the trespassing laws that we have on the books. We enforce mm -hmm. them that way. Um, we can steer them in the right direction for, for the services that are out there. We'll do that. Um, for the criminal element that's out there, that, that, that antisocial type, uh, you know, they'll, they eventually make their own bed, so to speak, no pun intended. Um, but I don't think it's government's place to be involved in the issue. Mm -hmm. But they need the but government needs to get out of the way of those that want to help. And there's a number of organizations. I know one of the things in El Dorado County that we have that's very big is we've got a number of food groups. I mean, we have uh, 
uh, El Dorado County Food Bank. Shoot. We have uh, the, sh the faith-based <coughs> uh, food group called SHARE with a number of the churches. Paula work, uh, volunteers a day a month uh, handing out food and doing that. Mm -hmm. And and those groups have done a, a pretty damn good job. They absolutely. really have. Absolutely. So, we have you know. services in this county for those groups that want to take advantage of them. We, we do take care of them. Um, but it's... <laughs> Yeah, government needs to get out of the way. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those issues. It's it's not an easy answer, but I think it's it's there's enough of an answer out there that it could certainly be used and um, just continue the way we're doing. I think my biggest one of the things that I was really thinking about was uh, we've got a fairly cold winter, I believe, approaching us and, and wet and wet, which we need we need desperately. Although it's messing with my motorcycle rides on the weekend, <laughs> but. <laughs> I'm a little grumpy about that too. Good for duck hunting. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's good for duck hunting. <coughs> but uh, I wonder how good Gray Lodge looks right now. I bet it's pretty neat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another story. Okay. Uh, anyway, so uh, yeah, so we the homeless issue. I know you've asked me a number of times. I asked the sheriffs about it. You kind of get the idea. We we both agree with each other. We think there's services out there that are provided by the private sector as well, and I think some, some easy situations with that. Uh, before I forget, I, I did Facebook, uh, Janine, a happy birthday, by the way. Oh happy my birthday gosh. to your wife. Everybody <laughs> yesterday, I couldn't go anywhere. Hey, tell your wife happy birthday. Hey, tell your wife happy birthday. It was wonderful well, for she's her. she's more popular on Facebook <laughs> I, than you are. I know. God bless her. <laughs> God, I had the sheriff from Mendocino tell, called me, hey, make sure you tell your wife yeah. happy birthday for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did Tom. too. I sent it out too. I wanted to make sure I got it in there. I tried to be one of the first. So, Thank you. I'll pass it on. Pass it along. It'll be Absolutely. really, really good. And, and there's two more items that I want to talk about before we close out the, sh the show. And a little bit is back to the concealed weapons permit um, situation and the length of time that it's taking primarily, my understanding is primarily because of Department of Justice. Primarily because of the Department of Justice and the amount of CCWs that we have. Right. Um, you know, we've talked about it on the show. We had, when I started, there was 748. Right, right. I believe is the number. We have over 4,000 now. Um, and our staffing and our time is the same. Right. Um, we have, thank God, our stars for our stars. We have some of our stars are retired law enforcement. So we've uh, roped them into helping mm -hmm. us with that. But a lot of it is DOJ. Um we are currently looking at uh, ways that we can reduce our workload in the process. One of them is is getting rid of one of the three appointments. That's mm -hmm. ridiculous. Why right. do we have three appointments for uh, uh, to get a CCW for a new applicant? Right. Um, we can probably do it in two, and maybe if the paperwork's clear and they send it in appropriately, maybe one. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at those avenues. Another thing we're, we're looking at statewide is, and Tom Basenko from Shasta County is the one that uh, is going to spearhead this, I hope. If not, some of, somebody else will pick it up and move with it. I think we might actually be able to get it passed despite the anti-gun movement in the, in the state just because it will be, uh, uh, it'll make a lot of sense. And that is to reduce or, or increase the renewal time from two years to four years. That'd make a huge difference. It would. It would cut our renewal, which right. is which is the predominant type they are right. now. Right. It would cut our caseload in half. Right. Um, that would be a huge benefit to us and, as and well. I believe the majority of the states are four years. I know I have an Arizona it, it one, makes, and I know it is four years. It so. makes absolutely no sense to have it two years because right. if a CCW holder does something wrong, in our, in, our, anymore. in our jurisdiction, we know about it instantaneously. Right. In right. another jurisdiction, we're going to know about it in a, in the course of business within a few hours or maybe a day. Right. Um, so to say that, well, we knew them because the renewal is every two years because a lot can happen in somebody's life in two years and we have to check everything again. Well, uh, that's, that's baloney. We're going to know. So... I think four years is a is a reasonable step to, to extend them to. Yeah, that'd be if nice. we can find the right legislator to carry that bill, mm -hmm. whether the assembly or the senate, um, and see if we can get that run through, that will help immensely. Yes, 
good good point. I think that would be a good one. I'd like to see that. Uh, yeah, uh, one of the things, the other question was, is is there, on the waiting time for DOJ, is there a difference between new and renewal as far as that waiting time? Yes. Okay. Yes, there is There is a difference. So renewals should be faster. Should renewals faster. Okay. Because you're getting rid of all the, inter the interview process and all that other stuff. Okay. That's on our side. Got it. The DOJ side, uh, it's... There is no, there is no check. No it's difference. done. No, no, because there's no recheck. Okay. On the DOJ side, it's just we run it out locally and we renew it. Oh, okay. All right. So there's no NICS background check on that either. Then is I don't there? believe so. Yeah. Uh, maybe something for us to look into because I was, I was curious. Now I know, no, I have a couple of students that did my last class in October that still have not cleared. In October for a renewal. For, for new. For new. For new. Well, for new. Now, renewals I haven't heard so much of because I was under the impression renewals, renewals would go faster. It's simply because you're already in the system and exactly. it's an easy check. So. Exactly. Right. 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 Okay. All right. So that's what you're going to have, guys, in, in all my next class coming up in February. If you need more information and you're taking that class, I'll talk to you more about that as well. But remember, that is not, and, and I, I have to correct a lot of people, it's not the Sheriff's Department. They're trying to get this work done out and as quickly as they can. We're having situations with Department of Justice and basically the FBI taking so long to get everything taking done. Taking so long. And those are at yeah. the bottom. But and, and but I will. I'll take responsibility. Part of it is our office. We're swamped. Yeah. We're swamped. But we're, we're looking at ways to be able to to shorten those up the best we can. Do the best we can with, sure. with the amount. It's, a, uh, it's, it's the unfortunate curse of being able to have so many great people that exactly. are willing to bear that responsibility in our county. But we'll, So... What I've, um, for instance, my, my wife, hers is coming up, and I said, call, call records and see what they want you to do. And they said, well, we want you to turn the paperwork in 30 days before you expire. And, of course, I'm automatically worried that maybe 30 days isn't long enough. If records are saying 30 days, then you're graced. Okay. If, they, if, if you do what they say yeah. and something happens and it goes longer than that, we're going to grace it. It's, okay. We're not going to. We're All right. Well, I'm that. just making sure, but you, you could still grace it. However, the person still can't carry until the the approval yeah, comes through. So. It sells out of county. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there's another bill that is going through the the state form. Okay. That should go away if this one goes through. That's going to go away. It's all going to be on our own credit card type, like we Wouldn't do already. Nice? Yeah. We do the we, we do, do both. already. Yeah. We do both to make it convenient. Well, I've showed you my Arizona one too. I've already yeah. seen them. They're really makes, nice. Makes sense. They may and it makes sense. So, so that's really good. So that's a good one on you all. All of you out there on your uh, concealed weapons permits, and please keep on coming because we. <laughs> I uh, uh, my my uh, slogan is an armed so a society is a polite society and. Uh, I really believe in that. And a safe society. And a safe society. And we have examples. And, and this is one of the things that really irritates me about the, the standard news is because they never report on anything positive with somebody that has a firearm. No. How many lives have been saved? How many people that the CCW holders have saved? All of that. And, mm. and I've had numerous. It just irritates me. They don't cover it. They refuse to do it. So... Who knows? But that's a different deal. I'm going to end this last thing up on a question that I got from a senior. And, um, and as, as I'm reaching my seniorhood, too, of course, as you're in your mid-60s, uh, one of the things that we all do is we all have certain medications that we have to travel with us. May it be blood pressure or migraine medicines or what it may be. And it makes it very difficult because I cannot carry all of my prescription pill bottles with me Everywhere, I'd have to carry a sack to do it. And um, so they're asking, what do we do? Now, in the short term, what I did is I took a picture of every one of my prescriptions on my phone. And I have it on my phone. And I thought, well, maybe that's a stopgap. But how do you feel as the sheriff about this issue? <clears throat> well, we know what the law says. It has to be kept in its original containers, yeah. right? But yet at every pharmacy and everybody uses them, the little weekly pill things, right? Um, the, the law is the law. Now, I have seen, I have run across folks where they have had their, you know, when you get your prescription, you also have that information packet that comes mm -hmm. with it that has the copy of that prescription and that information. True. I've They're... seen people keep that with them as proof of what it is. That's not a bad idea. Um, what do you think about uh, the phone idea? I like your phone idea, but unfortunately, most most folks your age don't even care. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 
I'm kidding. Nobody's. No, I'm kidding. They, they don't stick I'm around. I'm kidding. As that long. was that was in bad form. <laughs> um, no, anything you can do to just uh, law enforcement should use. We do. Um, you know, common sense and the spirit of the right, law. Right, right, We understand. Um, now, if you're if you're uh, 24 years old and uh, you got stolen property in the car and a stolen gun and you got a bunch of Vicodin on you that's not in your name or loose, yeah, yeah you're going to have a problem. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we use common sense. Yeah. I, I, and I know that in Elevada County. There's other areas that I worry about, but so what? I'll deal with it, you know. But that because you, you know. you're going to have an affirmative. If 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 they really take it to that level, yeah. and you end up in court. That's going to be your affirmative defense. You're going to walk in and say no. This this this. Yeah, this, this. absolutely. And then of course I would have had to probably have done something real knucklehead to, for them to even bother with that. Yeah. And that's not me. <laughs> I've never been that way at all. So. Don't you have anything that him? I try to be good. Anything no, better I, than <laughs> I don't know if I keep <laughs> fighting this CC. Our, our uh, Second Amendment issue. Whew. That's what makes the world go round. Yeah, well, that's the reason the discussion's there. But yeah. man, I wish people would use a little more common sense. I know. <laughs> I know. Well, do you have anything on your agenda? Because we pretty much wrapped up the show. This went really smooth. I have something real exciting I'm going to do, and we talked about it earlier. I'm going to the shot show for the first time in my life. So, for those of you out there, it's Shooting, Hunting, Outdoor Trade Show. And uh, I've been to it dozens of times, being in the business for a long time. But this he's a virgin going he's to the, the SHOT time. Show. And he's going to be a kid in a candy store. Because, folks, if you've never been to the SHOT Show, it's everything that has to do with anything with outdoor hunting, guns, you name it. It's all there under two great big roofs. It's so big. Yeah. And you're just going to have a wonderful time. Yeah, something's been on my bucket list forever and... It's not open to the public. It's um, only Correct. for it's folks trade. that are involved in the industry or right. in law enforcement. Right. Um, and even though I've been in law enforcement for quite some time, uh, I just was never able to make it happen. And this year, everything's working out that uh, I can make it happen. So That'll be fun. it's going to be very. Uh, it's going to be special. I'm going to have a really good time. There's a, there's some some folks I want to visit. Make some contacts in right in uh, the businesses that uh, we're some technology and some some. Uh, uh, firearms that we're looking at um so it'll right hopefully it'll be beneficial it's going well. to be super beneficial for you because i can tell you that now they have a whole floor that's dedicated to law enforcement and everybody that does any work or trade or sell or whatever law enforcement's there and it's going to be easier for you to you know deal with some of these people and see the technology that's out there so that's fantastic and it's great context because uh you'll probably be able to get trial units you'll probably be able to get all kinds of things yeah that's what i um talking with one of my peers they said the neat thing about it is usually at the shot show you are talking to the owner of the Correct. company or that's somebody right. that has decision making authority right. not some salesman that's knocking on your door yeah, trying exactly. to tell you something so you can actually make deals you can you can uh sure. build those relationships um I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I wish I, went, I wish I could have gone with I'm you. I'm excited. I would have loved to have gone with you to the show because <laughs> it's been really fun. But, Well, you know what? We wrapped it up again. Uh, first show of the year of 2016. Once more, thank you again, John. Thank you. Hey, for all of you that are out there watching the show, I'm sorry nobody called in. But, uh, again, keep watching. If you have a question about something that uh, Sheriff D'Agostini can answer, more than likely, that answer is on one of our shows. We've got quite a few shows, a couple of years worth of shows mm -hmm. out there for you to watch. And they're very entertaining. And we work hard to make sure that we try to bring you the best we can possibly do. I think we're getting pretty good at it now, yeah, huh? <laughs> we're doing Ooh. pretty good. So with that statement, I want to say thank you very much. I'm Rob Charney on Old Guy Tech TV with Crime Beat. And we'll see you next month.